on your life. Let's 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, just give time. Uh, redirecting to Facebook Live and. I yeah. have the notification, yeah. Yes. Hi everyone, for all the people who are watching us now on Facebook Live at our page, uh, a very good morning to everyone on this Sunday. Uh, we are very excited to welcome our guest today for Democracy Samvad, Ms. Prajita Sarangi, ma'am. Uh, this entire conversation is going to be really exciting, getting to know her journey that has been in public leadership. So I'll give a small introduction of Prajita, ma'am, and then ma'am, we will listen to you. Uh, she's currently a member of parliament from Bhubaneswar. Uh, she uh, joined BJP on the 27th of November in 2018. And... Uh, has been has begun her political journey fairly recently. Before that, she was uh, an IAS officer of the 94 batch from the Odisha Kada, and she was awarded the Shakti Samman in 2012 as well. Uh, she's been the Joint Secretary in the Ministry of Rural Development, Secretary of Higher Education, and also the Bhubaneswar Municipal Commissioner. So ma'am, really, really excited to speak to you and to welcome you to our uh, community of young people who aspire to move into public leadership. Uh, we've had a very, very big response to the event and lots of young people have sent us questions. So I'm going to start with some of the questions that all of us are extremely curious about. So you've had such an esteemed career in IAS and civil services. And then you made the decision that you would want to move towards active politics. So could you share, like, um, how was the journey from um, being a civil servant to um, a political uh, service person? And why did you make that decision? A very good morning to all of you, Anita, Prakhar, and those who are listening to us. This is indeed a pleasure to be in association with young people. Right? And uh, nothing could have been a better gift to me on a Dashara day. On the occasion of Dashara, I extend by my warmest greetings to all of you. Let there be peace all over. Let there be victory for all of us. Let there be joy. Let there be happiness. Let all darkness go. And let all be, let's all be together for a noble cause. And that noble cause would be the service of mankind. That's the only thing that we should all be dwelling upon. Now with this, I start. Anita actually gave me a tough topic in the sense that uh, she wanted me to talk on politics. She wanted me to talk on democracy. She wanted me to talk on my journey so far. And what I look at my journey a couple of years after. These are very tough things to answer, but yes, I would definitely try to do. There's a big task given to me. Now, let me first tell you, what is politics? Very important for all of us who are interested in politics, who are interested to join politics today or tomorrow. What is politics? It originates from the Greek word polis. We are all aware of it. It means city or a state. Polis means city or a state. But on a basic level, it refers to managing the affairs of the state. Very simple definition of politics, managing the affairs of the state. Although it is generally used in a modern context to describe government. Government. More modern views tend to see the word politics as conflict of ideas. Either you belong to my camp or you belong to the other camp. Right? Conflict of ideas. This is all politics is all about. This is a, in, in layman's language, I'm trying to define politics for both for all of you sitting together and listening to me. Now, my dear friends, I have put in about two years in politics, right? Exactly almost two years in politics. 27 November 2018, I joined the Bharti Janata Party. It was a very conscious decision, and I joined in Delhi. L if you see my work in the last two years, if I go for a self-analysis, I would say that politics is a mixture of the high and the low. Politics is the realm in which we attempt to realize some of our highest aspirations. 
our desire for political freedom, our longing for justice, our hope for peace and security. At the same time, politics is laced with individuals and groups seeking their selfish interests at the expense of others. And that is why probably Samuel Johnson called politics the refuge of scoundrels. Having known everything, having worked in the Indian Administrative Service for close to 25 years, and having fought with all the politicians in my own way in Orissa, where I put in 19 years as a bureaucrat, and thereafter I came to, joy, to, to Ministry of Rural Development, Government of India, and worked there for five years as Joint Secretary. Absolutely with no rancor, no bitterness, no allowance, I will definitely say that I could not pull on well with the politicians wherever I was. Yes, there were two politicians I will always hold very close to my heart. I would not like to name them, but I have highest regards for them in my administrative journey. Barring these two, I had difficult time. I would be giving you certain instances also. And a person of my nature, a person who did not go well with the politicians, joining politics is, I think, <laughs> one of the biggest wonders of the world. But you never know where your destiny takes you to. And ultimately, you know, there is a design of God for each one of you. Now, let me tell you about my journey. I was in the Indian Administrative Service, as I told you, for 24 years, 19, more than 24 years, about 19 years in Orissa, as I said, and five years in Government of India. Let me tell you, 19 years in Orissa, I had the best of postings. There's nothing to regret, nothing to regret. Let me tell you, my dear friends, there was absolutely no push factor for me. Wanting to quit bureaucracy, not getting good postings, not getting appreciation from the people, some kind of charges against me. There was absolutely nothing. Life was extremely smooth. And I was the peak of my career. I had the best of postings, whatever you may say. But let me tell you that I was a woman and I am a woman. And there was some kind of, uh, I would say, differentiation, uh, differentiation that I could feel all through. My husband is my batchmate. My husband is a male and was always a comparison. My husband belongs to the state of Orissa. Me too. Now that I have put in 24 years, I'm very much Oriya. But yes, there's some kind of discrimination which I could always feel. I will, I will start my journey from there. I did not know much of Oriya. I came to Odessa in 1995. I was made sub-collector of the smallest subdivision of the state, Hindol, in Tenkanal, district of Odessa. The smallest subdivision of the state, I underscore. And there are three subdivisions in the district of Tenkanal. It was the smallest in the state of Odessa, and of course, the smallest in the district of Tenkanal. The then district collector, I remember in 1996, always used to discriminate because I was a woman, because I was a non odia and because I did not know the language so very well. I had just entered into Odessa. I did feel bad. I did feel bad. I was a woman. I knew I had to struggle a lot and I knew I had to put in double the efforts. The other two subdivisions had males as sub-collectors. One, of course, was my husband and the other, there was a gentleman. Now, the district collector always put a question mark on my ability to deliver. I still remember there was a fire outbreak in my subdivision. Still, I remember those days with tremendous pain. And I put in all my efforts to see that the people got the necessary relief after the fire outbreak. I worked day in and day out, but then there was a district review and the district collector put a question mark on my ability to deliver and told the other two sub-collectors, the male sub-collectors, to come to my subdivision and see whether things were properly done. It was such a question. It was 
a big doubt cast on me and my ability. Friends, I must tell you, you know, these moments should be welcomed by each one of us. These are the challenging moments. These are the turning points. This pain is required in life. That was the turning point. The two sub-collectors wanted to come to my subdivision to review my work, imagine the kind of humiliation. I tell you, I don't know where the God helped me. I mean, I had the courage enough. I said, I would not allow this. The other two sub-collectors cannot come to my subdivision. And if the collector wants to know anything, he or he can come to me. He can come to my subdivision and review my work, ask my people, but I would not let the other two sub-collectors to come. I was very young, very, very young, did not know much of Oriya. But then that was a turning point. That thing passed off very well, and uh, ultimately the state work government recognized the kind of work I did, notwithstanding the behavior of the collector towards me. Then I started to work extremely hard. I would not work less than 15 hours a day. I had to learn Oriya. I had to integrate with the Orissa culture, which was extremely good. I had to be one with the people of Orissa. I had to be at the top of administrative ladder. And I knew I would. I started reading, I started learning, I started communicating with people. And the people who taught me Oriya were the cooks and the drivers and the gardeners and the people who would come to my grivan cell. I learned from everybody across. I was mad. I had to prove myself, and from there the journey starts. I wanted to be known as one of the topmost administrative officers of the state. That was the challenge. There should be no discrimination between a man and a woman. An officer is an officer. You don't look at a man or a woman, but you don't look at the gender. And from there the journey started. Friends, I must tell you, all the youngsters who are sitting there glued to the, to the Facebook or to wherever you are, Knowledge is supreme. Unless and until you have knowledge, you cannot go anywhere. I had to have the knowledge. And wherever you are, whichever sector you are in, right, try to have grip over things. Whatever you are doing, you should be at the top. You should always think, say, this is absolutely, you know, uh, people would say that, you know, this is ahankar, this is ego. But I would say, tell yourself with all humility. It's very, it is very, it is very um, difficult to have this statement inside you and also to be humble. But I would say, Eko aham dityo nasti bhuto na bhavishyati. Na bhuto na bhavishyati. Eko aham dityo nasti. Nobody should beat you at your game. And how can you do that? By acquiring knowledge, by being humble by being very good with your work, by taking everybody along, right? Mm -hmm. So wherever you are, have a grip. I tried my level best with all humility, I would say. Whichever posting that the government gave me, I wanted to know everything about everything. I thought nobody should dictate me, I should know everything. It doesn't mean that I try to be arrogant. No, not at all. And then, you know, as an administrative officer, what do you do? Administrative officer, the only thing that one person should do is, whosoever is, the, is, the, is in the chair, should have people at the center stage. Whom do we work for? As a bureaucrat, as a politician, who is my clientele? People, people, general people. No high, no low. When I talk of people, it means people, anybody, anybody. He or she is at the center stage. And if all your activities, all your works revolve around that person, then I think you're successful. So I try to do that. Whatever works I did, at the end of the day, I would ask myself whether these activities of mine would help the people who are standing there at the end. Am I going to deliver justice to them? Will they be happy with my efforts? Am I reducing the pain in the lives of others, those who are around me? That was the only objective. And all the schemes, programs, regulation, acts of government had to be implemented in such a manner that people benefited. Absolutely no discrimination 
no caste, no creed, no high, no low, no woman, no man. Friends, I really thank God. I thank the state government of Odessa for giving me the best of postings. Best in what sense? Very challenging postings. And let me tell you, within quotes, all postings which had been till then held by men. So all difficult postings were given to me. Wherever I was, you know, municipal commissioner was the most difficult posting. My report card was written, was written by the citizens of Bhuvaneshwar every single moment. Five minutes back, it was outstanding. Five minutes back, it was poor. Five minutes after, it would be poor. I was secretary of education dealing with 18 teachers associations. Every teacher association had its own set of grievances against the secretary of the department, against the government. I had to protect the, 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 the interests of the government. And at the same time, I had to deliver to the clientele. And who was the clientele? The clientele were the students. The clientele were the parents of students. And the clientele, of course, were the teachers who were teaching the students. I was the secretary of the Panchayati Raj department, which in our parlance is the rural development department. Mm -hmm. I, was, I had to think about all the rural folks. I had to think, think about the interests of the government. I had to think about everybody along, take everybody along, deliver things to the people in the manner that all of them benefited. Ek shabd mujhe hindi mein bahut hi achha lagta hai, ant ka uday. Ant ka uday. Jo line mein ya pankti mein ant mein khada hota hai, अगर उसके हित में काम हो और वह व्यक्ति कहे कि उसके हित में काम हो रहा है उसका कल्याण हो रहा है उसका उदय हो रहा है उसका विकास हो रहा है उसकी उन्नति हो रही है तब समझ लीजिए कि आपने सही काम किया As I told you, my dear friends, I had four districts where I worked. I was the district collector in four districts. One of the best postings I had was district collector, Koraput. You know, huge amount of money going down to the district, but people were not benefiting. Why? Because there was too much of liquor, liquor. So, you know, we started a campaign against drinking of liquor, and it was, I was not alone. About 1,000 villages we freed from liquor with the help of people. Education also, we brought about 17 kinds of reforms. Rural development also, you know, I must tell you one thing. Rural development also, with the help of people again, with the help of my, my, my um, friends, my colleagues, for the first time in the history of Orissa, Orissa, we conducted Gram Sabhas. We conducted Pali Sabhas. We made, we brought people to the center stage of things. My dear friends, I would just suggest one thing to all of you. Never try to be a planet. Try to be a meteor. If you see my diary, you would, you would see two quotations. One, I accept myself as I am, and I believe in myself, in the potential of my life and personality. One has to believe in oneself. That's extremely important. It doesn't mean that one should be arrogant. One should be as simple, as humble, as down to earth as possible. One should always be in the taking mode, taking in a different sense. One should try to learn from everybody one comes in touch with. One should try to give 100% to the person one is with. The other quotation which is in my diary, you can see anytime, is I would rather be a superb meteor with every atom of me in magnificent glow than a sleepy and permanent planet. The proper function of man is to live, not to exist. All of us need to live. All of us need to live. We just cannot exist. We just can't be a planet there in the sky forever and ever with hardly any light. We can be mature. 
but we must shine. We must give light to others. And we are capable. We need to be confident. We need to put in very hard work. We need to have knowledge. We need to be one with the others. We need to be empathetic. We need to be kind. We need to be compassionate. You know, unless and until you are compassionate, unless and until you are kind, you cannot connect with others. We have to be kind. We have to be compassionate. Only then we can connect with others. Connecting with others is extremely important. Now the question of Anita. I think this is the background. Now I come to the crucial question. Why politics? Why not bureaucracy? Now, let me tell you, I repeat, I was at the peak of my career. Everything was going up. Everything was looking up. Everybody was gaga about my performance as an administrative officer. I was outstanding in my confidential reports by my superiors. I was the joint secretary of the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Program in the government of India for five years. I worked with Prime Minister Modi for five years and I was handling 60,000 crore rupees every year as joint secretary for five years. I was, there was no problem at all. And, but then what was the push factor? That's the question. Now, listen to me for one or two minutes. My tenure in government of India was coming to an end on uh, 6th of August, 2018. And friends, Maybe, I don't know, from January 2018 onwards, I was sitting at the top of things in the administrative uh, 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 sector. I was a joint secretary. There was no problem at all. And suddenly I started feeling uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to communicate the kind of discomfort that I was in. You know, sometimes perfection hits you hard. If everything is perfect, I don't feel comfortable. I went to the US and I thought everything was perfect and I came back to India. This happened with me. You know, I mean, everything was perfect in my life. A couple of cars, too many people working for me, huge package, three lakh per month I was drawing from government of India. I was absolutely not, there was no reason why I should quit, but I was very uncomfortable. Somewhere or the other, the perfection of living irked me, the luxury irked me. It was irksome. I thought this was not the life it was meant to be. I had to do something more than this. I wanted a bigger platform. I wanted a bigger horizon. I wanted challenges. I wanted more connection with the people. I wanted to reach out to the poor and the needy. I wanted to wipe off their tears. I thought life was much more than, you know, a fat three lakh salary, huge number of cars and too many people running around me. Life was much more than that. I was losing the meaning in life and suddenly one fine day, you know, I, I, I talked to myself and I thought I did not have much to give to IAS and I did not have much to take from IAS. Whatever I had to give, I have given. Whatever I had to take, I had to learn. I have learned from the Indian Administrative Service. Life is much more than this. I needed a bigger horizon, I repeat, I needed a bigger platform. I needed more challenges in life. And I remember on 2nd of August, 2018, I sit with my husband and my two children and I tell them that I want to quit. They were all aghast. They did not know what happened. My husband was my batchmate. He knew that I had a sterling career in the Indian Administrative Service, you could understand. And he was aghast. He knew I was unhappy, but he didn't know that it would come so soon. 11 years were left for the IAS to come to an end. And suddenly I say, I want to quit. Mm. And then, let me honestly tell you, people ask me why BJP, people ask me many questions. You know, friends, I have always listened to the call of my heart. And that's why I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I'm a happy go lucky person. I'm a very simple person, not of much of complications. I don't think beyond this moment. I'm talking to you. This is the best moment. <laughs> I love the story of Leo Tolstoy. You know, Leo Tolstoy has, has written a story, three questions. Three questions are what's the most important time? What's the most important person? And what's the most important place? 
And at the end of the story, you get the answer. The answer is the most important person is the person we happen to be with at the moment. The most important place is the place where we are at the moment. And the third and most important is the most important time is now, because this is the time when we have power. Past is past and future is future. So, you know, I, I just thought that I had to listen to the call of my heart. My conscience told me that I had to go to the people. I had to connect more with the people. I had to wipe off the tears. I wanted a bigger stage. I wanted more challenges and I decided to quit. And I, let me tell you, I worked for five years with Prime Minister Modi. Not that I belong to the BJP and that's why I'm extolling the virtues of uh, this great person. Before that also, I would have told you the same thing before coming to BJP. I worked for, with him for five years very closely when I was the Joint Secretary. He would throw challenges. He loves challenges. He would throw challenges. You know, Narega was a UPA creation. Mahatma Gandhi Narega was a UPA one creation. So when Prime Minister Modi took over, things were not in good shape. May 2014, he came. And he, I was a joint secretary. And he just dismissed Narega. And actually, Narega was in a, in a pit. Then again, it was a challenge. He dismissed Narega on the floor of the house. And then suddenly, I realized we had to transform Narega as per his desire. We started working. And let me tell you, it's no exaggeration. I moved to, with his direction, with his uh, guidance, with his support, I, with my team, moved to 25 states in the country. I stayed in 400, more than 400 districts at night. Ask me which district I haven't gone to. I stayed there for the night, looked into the problems that were afflicting the implementation of Narega, reached out to people all across the country in 25 states as much as we could do together. And we could transform Narega. This government transformed Narega under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi. And during that time, you know, I felt here was a person who meant good for the country. Here was a person who had no selfish interests. Here was a person who had come from below. He had clarity of vision. He had a dream for the country. He had transparency. He could work very hard. He could take the team along. And you know, he could pick up people like us. Friends, in my family, there's nobody in politics. I am a, I'm a daughter of teachers. My, my mother was a teacher, a high school teacher, and my father was a professor of English literature in Bhagalpur University in Bihar. Very humble family, very humble background. Teachers didn't have much of money also. Didn't have much of money, honestly. Nobody was in politics. So Honorable Prime Minister Modi, picking up a person of my stature who had neither manpower nor muscle, manpower, muscle power or money power, I had nothing. He just picked me up. He gave me the opportunity to contest the elections from Bhuvaneshwar, where I was the district collector, where I was also the municipal commissioner. God, good people were very kind towards me in Bhuvaneshwar and around. And I don't know, I mean, he has this, is his wonderful knack of, you know, knowing people, which many of us don't have. Many of us don't have. So I think I thought there was a man, here was a man whom I can follow, I can emulate. You know, you need a model, you need a role model in life. He is my role model. He has no selfish interest. What does he want to have? And you know, my dear friends, unless you give up everything, you cannot acquire anything. I had to give up everything. So I left 3 lakh salary. I just left all the cars. I left all the people and trust me, trust me. I went to Bhuvaneshwar from Delhi. I was in Delhi all through when I joined the party. I went on 29th of November, 2018 to Bhuvaneshwar with a suitcase, with a couple of saris there, to Bhuvaneshwar with nothing, virtually nothing. Mm -hmm. Nobody will believe this. I had lots of best wishes of people from all across Oresa. I was here in Delhi. I'm talking to you from Delhi now. I'll be going to Bhuvaneshwar in the evening. And I had nothing, I just took a suitcase and I went to Bhuvaneshwar 
and I went at three o'clock to the chief secretary of the state and I handled my hand, handed over my resignation from the service. And he was aghast because he thought he would be giving me a big plume posting there. He thought I had gone to join, rejoin in the government of Orissa. Everybody was aghast. Those who knew me, those who knew my about my decision, that number was very few by that time. The journalists were mad. Absolutely, media was crazy. They did not know what to ask me, and I left. I had just one suitcase. Believe me, nobody will believe me. And I just went and landed at my in-laws' place because I did not have a house of my own. My in-laws were aghast, and I just told, I said, I have come to quit. I've handed over my resignation. They were aghast because they were very proud of a daughter-in-law who was in the IAS. Mm. Why should anybody like a daughter-in-law who is nothing? I was nothing. On 29th of November, 2018, I was nothing. But then those people who loved me stood by me. They stood by me. Many of them were there who stood by me, my family, my husband, my children, they stood by me. You know, my dear friends, you have to be crazy. You have to be mad if you really want to do something. Don't be too calculative. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Life is a singular and changeable thing full of vicissitudes. How little it takes to save a wreck us. Don't plan too much. Listen to the call of your heart. Be honest to yourself. Be nice to others. Be kind to others. Be compassionate. Connect yourself with others. Be a good human being at the end of the show. Be a good human being. And that's what I did. I went there and from there, if you ask me, my journey started from 1st of December, 2018. Mm -hmm. The Bharati Janata Party there in the state was very kind to me. People have been very kind to me. People have been very nice to me. And I'm blessed. The people of Orissa have been very kind to me. The leaders in the BJP in Delhi have been very kind to me. The leaders of BJP in the state of Orissa have been very kind to me. God has been extremely kind to have associated me with such nice people. Friends, the only thing that I would uh, advise you is just be positive. Very difficult. Tell yourself in the morning when you get up, today is a day when I will not be negative. I will be positive. About people, about my situation, about any event, about any incident, I will be positive. I will not take, think ill of anybody. You know, that's what I do every day. Today also in the morning when I got up, I did this. I told myself, I have to be good to others. I have to be positive about others. There are people who are bad. I'm not saying you should not know. Don't keep your eyes closed. People are bad around us. But if there are 10 bad, there are 100 good. Always remember, I know people are bad. I know people are stabbing me behind the back. I know who is criticizing me. I'm intelligent enough. But when they sit in front of me, they feel ashamed because they know I know, but I'm very good to them. And that's the biggest punishment you can inflict on your critics. Be nice to them. And then look, by, by making them know fully well that you know that they have criticized you, be nice to them. Mm. Let them feel ashamed of themselves. And I always believe in one thing. Again, you will say I'm arrogant, but I would say either they will change themselves, they will accept you, or they will quit. Bad people will either quit or they would come to your fold. They would be like you, my way or the highway. Mm. Isn't it? But let's not spend our time being negative. Now I come to politics. I'll just take five, seven minutes, then I can stop. Give me just two, three minutes more. Two years have been very eventful for me. And uh, God has been very kind. The Bharati Janata Party at the central level has made me the national spokesperson very recently. And I am very grateful to them for this because as I told you, I have no godfather in politics. Absolutely no godfather. Nobody's on the right, nobody's on the left, nobody behind, nobody in front. It's sheer hard work, it's sheer honesty. Want to work for people. I want to help people. I want to be at the service of people. I have come to policy. I have come to uh, politics 
for framing the right kind of public policies and for public service. Public policy and public service, for me, this is politics. Samuel Johnson, when he said politics is the last refuge of scoundrels, I think was not wrong. It was not wrong. We all, of, we all need to change the definition of politics and politicians. That's what I want to do with the support of people around me. We need to change the definition of politics and politicians. See, ultimately, politicians are the legislature, isn't it? They're extremely important. They have to legislate. They have to govern. They have to have the right kind of governance model for the country, for all the states in the country. How can we have the right kind of governance model if right kind of educated people are... We have to have education, knowledge, grip over things. We have to hire, have compassion. We have to have positive approach. We have to have the ability of taking everybody along. It's very, it's very easy to fight with everybody. One minute and you, you alienate everybody. It's very difficult to take everybody along by understanding the viewpoint of others. Yeah. There are many situations when you know you want to shout, in my case, people would come and start uh, saying something that would be nonsensical. They would hit you hard, sitting in front of you. That point of time, you have to control yourself. Tremendous control is required. Tremendous patience is required. And tremendous humility is required. I धैर्य और विनम्रता अगर धैर्य है और विनम्रता है तो दुनिया आपकी है बहुत सारी ऐसी परिस्थितियां आती हैं जब आपको चिल्लाने का मन करता है जब आपको बिगड़ने का मन करता है जब आपको यह कहने का मन करता है कि तुम सही नहीं हो मैं सही हूं और मैं जानती हूं कि मैं सही हूं लेकिन धैर्य दिखाना है धैर्य से सुनना है कभी-कभी ऐसा लगता है उनकी बातों में भी दम होता है और सबसे सीखने की मनोवृत्ति होनी चाहिए मैं आपको एक छोटी सी घटना बता दूं फिर मैं पॉलिटिक्स पर आऊंगी और मैं तब उसके बाद से शांत हो जाऊं मैं म्युनिसिपल कमिश्नर थी और मैं एक दिन सुबह-सुबह मैं फील्ड में जा रही थी मैंने देखा गंदगी बहुत ज्यादा है मैं बिगड़ पड़ी एक स्वीपर ने उसका नाम है माया दे आई विल नेवर फॉरगेट हर नेम माया दे शी केम अप टू मी एंड सी सेड व्हाई आर यू एंग्री you don't know how to act. Trust me, she said this. Uriya me boli. She said, you don't know how to govern. I was mad. I thought I was the epitome of good governance. I thought I knew everything. She said, I did not know how to govern. She said, you start a beat system. You put people responsible for one kilometer. Every one kilometer, there would be a person responsible for cleaning. And then we started the beat system in Bhuvaneshwar. And then Bhuvaneshwar became the fifth cleanest city in the country. I was the municipal commissioner. Thanks to Maya, they I learned from her. So what I'm saying is, everybody teaches you something or the other. We should be open. We are not open. We are closed personalities. Let's be open. In politics, last two years, highly eventful. What is the role of a politician? To participate in the parliamentary process, one. Number two, I'm representing the people of my constituency, around 20 lakh people of Bhubaneswar parliamentary constituency here in the parliament. I have to voice their issues here in the parliament. I have to bat for their issues. I have to see that their problems are solved. Number three, I have to get into organizational process of my party in my state, in my district, in my constituency. And number four, I have to bring in developmental changes on the ground. Right? There should be development visible on the ground. These are the three, four things that I have to do. Mm. Friends, right from day one, I wanted to be in the grip of things. So I want, I started speaking on the bills in the parliament. I started putting forth questions in the parliament pertaining to my constituency and my state, Odisha. One should be as active as possible as a member of parliament in the parliament, in the Lok Sabha, and I did that. And I'm extremely satisfied with all humility again, I would say. I'm extremely satisfied when I brought out my annual report card 
on the completion of one year as an MP, I brought out my annual report card on 2nd of July mm -hmm. this year. 2nd of July, 2020, I brought out my annual report card for one year that I put in from 23rd May, 2019 to 23rd May, 22nd May, 2020. This period, I brought out my report card and I'm extremely satisfied today. I'm trying to get into the, 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 the coming up of youth organizations, coming up of women organizations. I should not be using that word I so frequently, it's basically we. So we are also getting into, you know, bringing in all the intellectuals together, people who are positive, people who have positive vibes, people who are like-minded for the ben uh, benefit of society, for the benefit of Orissa. So we are trying to have uh, a summer of an organization which would be kind of, you know, started very soon, where we have people with positive vibes, intellectuals, academicians, doctors, engineers, freelancers, all of them, you know, educated guys. We have a wonderful youth organizations. We have a wonderful youth women organization. These are all societies doing extremely well. And a great call has been given by my team. I'm just one of the members of the team that I have. And, you know, they have said that nobody will sleep hungry in Bhuvaneshwar. We are launching this by the name of Annapurna. It's demeaning for all of us to find that a person is sleeping hungry in our area. So we are trying to have a kind of project, a kind of campaign with the help of the non-governmental organizations where we would be feeding all hungry people. And this is starting very soon. I need your best wishes. In fact, let me tell you honestly, if you ask me, I've given you enough definition of politics, public policy, public service, this, that, Ultimately, politics boils down to connecting people, networking, partnership, progress through partnership. That's what politics is. We need to bring people together for a noble cause. That's what politics is. And I'm extremely happy right now that I have been able to help the government to contribute positively towards legislating the right kind of acts. The triple talaq bill, I'm extremely happy that I could raise the voices of women in the parliament. Triple talaq bill, I could speak on at length when the triple talaq bill came. When Article 370 was cracked, when Article 35A was cracked, I was very much there. Consumer Protection Act, when it came, I did speak. The Transgender Protection Bill, when it came, I was there, I spoke. Politics gives you a huge horizon. And you can, you can reach out to hundreds and thousands of people. You can impact thousands of people. Bureaucracy was constricting me. You have to work within the limits of government. I, was, I thought I was constricted. I thought I was working within the confines of bureaucracy in Odessa. Mm. Right? And that's why I quit. Now, politics gives me a huge horizon. Now, Anita. Now I think I stop here. That's how I'm in politics. I've given you the background. I'm an extremely happy person because what I say, what I do, and what I think, these are in harmony. There is absolutely no dichotomy. Now, Anita, the floor is yours. Thank you so far. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing so much about yourself. I feel like I was just listening, mesmerized, and there's so many little pearls of wisdom that you've given that you know are going to be those things that we'll always remember we actually have a lot of audience questions coming in also so i i'll just uh, pose a couple of things so something when you were talking about policy design and uh, implementation now that you are on the other side you said that you feel a little you felt limited when you were in the bureaucratic side but now when you are uh, designing these things do you feel like it's uh, now working with the bureaucracy is easier for you or how do you see like political leadership anchoring policy that doesn't kind of get caught up in that bureaucratic churn? A very good question, Amita. Very good question. See, for me, working in Odessa is easy. I'm talking of me, I'm not talking of my colleagues. I'm talking of me because all those who are in bureaucracy, uh, well, either they were my seniors, they were my subordinates, or they were my contemporaries. They are. So it's very easy for me to connect with them and get things done. Mm -hmm. Very easy. 
Mm. I have no problem. At the government of India level also, you know, all the joint secretaries, all the additional secretaries, the secretaries here, more or less known to me. They know me and I know them. So for me, uh, interpersonal relationship is extremely good. I don't find the difficulty, however, for a politician who is in relationship faces problem. Hmm. Faces problem with the bureaucracy. I was a bureaucrat, I know. Now, what is the antidote? What is the solution? Right? As a, if you go by the constitution of India, the politicians are very important, extremely important. It is the, the, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary, as you know, the three wings, and, and the legislature is at the top, extremely important. Now, if they don't pull on well with the bureaucracy, or if the bureaucracy doesn't listen to them, what happens? It cracks. If there is no harmony among these three, legislature, executive, and judiciary, then everything falls flat. flat. Ultimately, the people of the country suffer. Mm. Who are governed, they suffer. Now, what's the, what's the remedy? Let me tell you. The remedy is knowledge. I'm a great votary of the idea that a politician should be knowledgeable, should have tremendous education, mm. should have understanding, should have empathy, should be in the grip of things, and should know how to conduct himself or herself. By being humble, you are not bringing yourself down the other person, right? Mm. You're not belittling yourself. By being humble, you are actually encouraging the other person to actually help you in the work that you are doing. Mm. There was a politician, when I was a bureaucrat, there was a politician who walked into my room and I was in the throes of things, you know, I was too many things were going on, the meeting was on, hundreds of people were sitting. And so when I saw him, I said, Namaskar, but I did not get up. He came and lambasted me, I remember. He said, why aren't you getting up when I am the, I'm the MLA of the area? Technically, he was right. Technically, he was right. Then I got up. I said, Namaskar, and I said, sorry, I, I, I was in the throes of things. I could not see you. But then you know what? There was, a, there was a, some kind of a breach between both of us forever because of his behavior. I never wanted to do his work in the, in the days to come. I, I don't know, I was right, right or wrong, but I didn't feel like doing his work. Behavior is very important. Had he at that point of time understood my situation and I would have, he would have empathized with me, he would have waited for me, I think I would have been doubly nice to him forever and ever. So I think behavior matters, knowledge matters. Mm -hmm. And one very important thing about politicians is they don't listen. Listening is very important. You know, if a bureaucrat, if an officer is saying something, he or she is being paid for implementing the law, isn't it? Mm. He or she is saying something about a rule, about a regulation, about an act. I think we need to listen and appreciate as a politician. So unless and until you are humble and you are knowledgeable, mm. you are educated, you cannot. So I think a lot depends on the conduct of a politician. It's both ways. A bureaucrat also should know how to behave. But bureaucrat knows that in the ladder, he's below the politician. He knows it, he or she knows it. In the ladder, as for the constitution, is below the politician. MLA or MP anyway is higher in the ladder as far as the constitutional tenets are concerned. So I think it's a question of uh, both ways, but politicians have a more responsible role to play. And the only answer is education, education and education. So I think that's what. Sure. That question was from Lipsa. So thanks Lipsa for the question. Uh, we have another question from Deepak. So he's asked, uh, ma'am, what's your opinion on the right to recall, a right to be granted for voters, to call back incompetent or corrupt politicians who either underperform or misuse their power? See, politicians should be highly accountable to the voters. Mm -hmm. Highly accountable. This report card thing, 
Honorable Prime Minister Modi has started. He gave his report card. Giving a report card demands a lot of courage. It's not possible for any person, you know, any politician to give a report card. It's very difficult. You know, you are actually, people are looking into you, looking, uh, looking at you, and you are looking into yourself in the mirror. When Prime Minister Modi gave the report card, people like us actually followed him, and many of us gave the report card. So I think every politician should give the report card. They should feel accountable to the citizens. And let me honestly tell you, this right to recall, I am not in favor of. We should have a system by which politicians uh, become more accountable. Mm -hmm. In bureaucracy, I remember, I was in the IAS, I had to go to Masuri a couple of times, the Lal Bahadur Shastri Academy of Administration, where we were given mid-term training, we were given mid-term training as to how I should behave as a bureaucrat, how I should work as a bureaucrat. Why not for the politicians? There should be mid-term courses for the politicians. Mm. You know, our parliament does do that, does do that once in a while, but I think it should be more and more and more. Mm. Politicians should be taught how to behave. Politicians should be taught to study more, to educate themselves more. They should know how to conduct themselves, but they also deserve tremendous respect because as per the constitution, they are at the top. Hmm. And we should not demean their chair. Never bring down any institution. I'm extremely, rather I would say, I'm, I'm dead against bringing down the, 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 the prestige of any institution, any institution, whether it's bureaucracy, whether it's politician, never. If there is an MP, if there is an MLA, if there is a minister, he or she, the chair must be respected. Hmm. We are bound to. And, but then, it's the responsibility also of the chair to behave in a proper manner and to deliver as desired by the citizens. So I think it's both ways. It's both ways. I can't say voters can have the right to recall. I don't like that. This entire concept is wrong. This will be misused. So I would not vote for it. Yes. Sure. So we are slightly running out of time. So uh, I might not be able to take too many questions anymore. But as a closing question, ma'am, as I told you, our audience is mostly young people who aspire to move into political leadership, politics, especially a lot of women as well, who find it even more challenging to conceive of politics as a full-time career. So what do you think would be some um, advice or something from your own experience that you will tell them who don't come from uh, money backgrounds, who don't come from a political lineage, who are middle class people who want to serve and serve they and Anto, they are guiding principles, but what would be some things that you would um, advise? See, first, I would say that politics is a great sector to work in. I'm extremely proud that I am in politics. I'm extremely happy that I'm here. First, you need to ask yourself whether you really want to join politics. For public policy, for public service, you have to join politics. And service of others should be your only agenda. There should be no other vested interest. You should not come to politics to make money or to have tremendous muscle power around you. If those are the objectives, I would better say not to join politics. If you want to serve people, this is the best platform. One. Number two, never try to be independent. Now, there's a very strange thing I'm telling you. Independent in the sense, get into a political party of repute. That's your choice. I chose Bharti Janta Party. You may choose something else. Why did I choose Bharati Janata Party? Because I liked its ideology and I liked its leader. You have, to, you have to align yourself with the ideology of the party and you have to like the leader's ideology and like the leader's character, like the leader's methodology of working. If you do this, then you do not have dichotomy or you do not feel unhappy later. When I joined BJP and I joined the team of Prime Minister Modi, I knew what was coming and that is why I'm happy today. So I think uh, first is you have to finalize the party, join a party. Read as much as you can about the ideology. I'm reading now. 
I'm reading about Din Dayal Upadhyayji's Ekatma Manavad. I'm reading right now. I try to read as much as I can so that I align myself with the objective of the party. Now, after that, you have to have a role model. As I have one, Prime Minister Modi, you can have a role model. Right? Get in touch with a role model. The best thing about some political parties, I'm not naming mine. I cannot comment on others. I have no authority. Is that things are changing. People like us are also coming into politics with no money. I had no money, no bank balance. When I joined political party, I think I had just a 10, uh, 12 lakhs in my bank account. Trust me, nobody will believe. I had 12 lakhs in my bank account and I went to Bhuvaneshwar with a suitcase with some saris. That's what I had. So I think the person of my, my, my uh, financial situation can join politics with no background, each one of you. Have the right role model, have the right party, get in touch with the role model, take his or her blessings. And be honest. If you're honest with your role model, he or she will pick you up. Don't be dishonest. Don't be what you are not. Don't try to be more than what you are. And you have to surrender. I think it's surrendering. It's complete surrender. I surrendered before my leader. Mm. I am this, and I want to serve people. Please bless me. That's it. Just surrender. Surrender. That's it. Ultimately, it is all about surrendering. So I think this, if, it, if this is it, there is no problem at all. Have a role model. And then, uh, as I told you, first educate yourself. You know, I feel this. Uh, I feel uh, un uncomfortable when I see young boys and girls with not much of education trying to be leaders. You just cannot be a leader if you are not knowledgeable. First, acquire the minimum knowledge, basic knowledge. Go to a certain level, and then you say quit. I went to the IS. I put in 25 years of grueling hard work. With all humility, again, I would say, I never worked for less than 12 to 14 hours a day when I was in the IS. Grueling hard work. I learned all the nuances of the job. And then I, and I, then I called it quits. So you have to reach a certain level and then you call it quits, right? Don't be immature. I think we need, we need a lot of maturity, a lot of prudence in politics. Yes, Anita, next. I think this is it. Yeah. So yes. we are at 11.58. So yeah. uh, we won't take too much of your time from here. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing so candidly your entire journey, your stories, your anecdotes, and just so much optimism and hope that you've instilled our audiences with. Often when we speak about politics, a lot of negative imagery comes in, a lot of criticism comes through, but you've actually thrown light on the potential that politics can be and just made it so much more of an um, aspiration for people and shown like what the silver lining can be in the space. So that has been amazing. I'm sure all our, especially women audiences, have loved listening to you. So thank you so much uh, for being here with us. Thank for you. all our audiences here who may be joining us for the first time, thank you for spending your Sundays with us and all the regular people. I hope this was a useful conversation for you. You enjoyed listening to it. So thank you so much for being here. For people who don't know much about Indian School of Democracy, we are a non-partisan organization, non-profit organization who work uh, to get more young people in, interested and into public leadership and politics. Uh, we want to be able to do multiple different programs uh, to help them build their skills, build their knowledge, as ma'am was saying, prepare themselves for this political journey. We are right now uh, trying to not just have one person supporting, but actually have all our audiences support this venture and support clean politics. So we are crowdfunding and raising resources for our next upcoming trainings for young people. So please look at the link on our website as well as on the Facebook page and do contribute in whatever small way you can. No contribution is small. Do support the idea of clean politics and lovely leaders like Aparajita, ma'am. Thank you so much for spending Thank your time. Thank you.